Well, thanks for joining us. The USDA this morning said, hey, we had an overnight sale to announce, so let's see what they had to say. It was one sale, and this time around it was a sale of corn. The buyer, no one knows. It's appropriate after Halloween. Unknown destinations for corn. 204,000 tons were sold, fairly sizable amount, and you can add that to the totals that we had last week. So corn's been on a little bit of a run when it comes to export sales activity, but there was no mention of soybeans and there was no mention of China as a buyer once again. Now, uh, we have the corn market here showing a last trade with December at 3.95 and three quarters, and that is down two and three quarter cents on the day. Now let's check out our soybean trade with these quotes provided by Bar Chart. On soybeans, we have November down five at 10.51 and a half. That one's in delivery, and I just wanted to pass along. We did have delivery notices posted this morning, and on November soybeans, we had 501 contracts that were posted for delivery. That could be noteworthy, and that could add a little pressure here. January beans down two and three quarter cents at 10.53 and a half. In the wheat market, this is how we're rolling right now. We have December Chicago wheat nine and a quarter higher at 607 and three quarters after getting as low as 591 in the early morning trade. Well, that's quite a turnaround there. How about that for uh, 17 cents about off of its earlier low? What about Kansas City wheat? Is it following suit? Well, I'll say and taking the lead now, December now 13 and three quarters higher at 555 per bushel, 20 cents off of its overnight low. And if you look at our Minneapolis wheat, let's uh, see what's going on with the uh, spring wheat trade right now. We currently have that December contract six and three quarters higher at 559 per bushel. That one's about 13 cents off of its uh, overnight low. All right, let's bring in Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated based in Nashville. Big moves in the wheat market here this morning. They're getting all the attention. Why would that be, Chris? Well, there's a couple of factors out there this morning, Martin. One, that moisture that they received last week is pretty much gone. Got cold weather and drying back out again. But notice that some of the corn and bean prices up so much begins to make the cheaper uh, priced wheat a little bit more attractive to swap out for some feed grain. And that's kind of what we noticed a little bit. Uh, maybe in China has been buying out some world wheat through Australia and a couple other places. But that's why they're doing that. And maybe the U.S. could benefit from some of that a little bit later on. Yeah, we are seeing some uh, really choppy action. Just look at that uh, intraday chart uh, from the open uh, a little earlier this morning to where we are now. Just uh, kind of stunning on the charts there. Uh, if you look at the Kansas City market, here's a look at that intraday chart as well. Um, the corn and soybean trade, you know, when we wrapped up last week, they had a downward note the last couple of days. And some had to wonder, is the top in long term in the corn and soybean markets? Uh, so now it's kind of a battle to decide if that's the case or not. But I wanted to ask you here, Chris, with the election coming up tomorrow, what if there is a protracted uh, election uh, uh, determination? Would that be good or bad for ag commodity trade versus maybe the uh, outside markets? Well, I think an uncontested win. Either one of them says, okay, this is who we have to live with. Let's get to work and make the best out of it. But if it's very contested and we're not real sure, that indecision always makes people a little bit skeptical. You'll probably see a lot of uh, mudslinging going on if it's a very contested election. So I'd say if, it's, if, if it goes one way or the other pretty solid, everybody will get up and start ready to go to work and look out for the next four years. If not, if it's contested, I think people will have to withdraw from some of the markets. Right now, the Dow is going up by 520 points, so it's on a tear this morning, 26,914, getting not too far from uh, testing 27,000 now. Uh, Chris, we'll come back here in a moment, and we'll take another peek at our livestock trade today, see what direction they want to go as we get deeper into the session when we come back. Hi. Well, I wanted to uh, continue our conversation here with Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated and transition over into our livestock trade now. Uh, Chris, I wanted to take a look, if you don't mind, at our uh, wholesale beef and pork markets as we headed into the weekend. And it was interesting, now on the beef side, we talked about the cash cattle markets last week that uh, ended up more around 106 or so. So I think that was fairly even with what we had the week before. But look at the wholesale trade. We had the choice wholesale cuts on the beef gaining 78 cents Friday afternoon at 208.10 per hundredweight. And the selects were uh, up just a lonely penny at 191.24.
the spread, $16.86 as we went home for the weekend. But in all, I mean, it, it seems like the, uh, the wholesale beef trade kind of held its own. It did sell off during the middle of the week, but it came back later on. And basically, I think we ended up about where we started, didn't we there? We did. I didn't see any kind of great big movement throughout the entire month of October. Um, you know, when you look at the amount of kills that we had, the slaughter rate, and the amount of beef production, everything was just about status quo. So I, I haven't seen anything out there that leads me to believe that the consumer is now increasing their consumption or decreasing it either one. On the live cattle futures right now, with these quotes provided by Bar Chart December, now down uh, 65 cents. We're at 107.65. And compare that to the high of the day when we were basically a dollar and a couple of pennies above where we are now. So pretty close to the low of the day it's, as it stands right now. February dropping 75 cents at the current time. On the feeder cattle market today, we have the November contract dropping by a dollar and one tick. Uh, that would be at 136.37 per hundred weight and basically almost a dollar off of its earlier high today. And I did want to point out that November is leading the way down. Of all the contracts, that is showing the most weakness on that nearby. And on the lean hog trade today, we have December 32 cents lower at 65.25. February down 52 cents at 65.02. The most pressure actually in the April contract. Now, if we look at the wholesale pork trade last Friday afternoon, carcass values were down 377. They were priced at 83.80 per hundred weight. The loin values were down $3.88. And the ham market uh, on the uh, pork cutouts was down 13.93 at 83.85, and we had the belly market uh, up 7.84. That ham market, boy, it took a big nosedive. That's been making big swings here, Chris. It has. It has indeed. All right, uh, Chris. I I'll let you go. I know you got to run too. Uh, it's going to be a busy day here with the markets. But thanks for uh, weighing in here for a second. I appreciate it, Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated. He's based in Nashville, and Janet, with that, I will turn it back to you. All right, as always, thank you.